Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Respected elders, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As I gaze on this vast crowd, almost 200 people, on this wet, cold Saturday night, and I listen to my brothers, our counselors, our candidates, our friends. I'm a very proud man indeed. Because we did all this. Politics was dead in this city. Labour held this seat for 40 years whilst Bradford sank. Literally, in the case of the Westfield Hall, literally to the ground. Leeds boomed. Bradford sank under one party rule with no one to challenge them. I don't speak with a Yorkshire accent, but I love that phrase from Mohammed Salas when he talked about the other parties. He said they're done with. They are done with. And exactly George Galloway, I live at 66 Whitney Hill in Manium. And before that, I lived in Hollings Road. My wife's here, we spent our honeymoon in Hollings Road. How romantic can you get? I was elected here on the Thursday. I got married on the Saturday and flew back to Bradford to live in Hollings Road. I moved up in the world 150 yards to 66 Whitney Hill. I have an office at 2 Grattan Road, BD1. I sit there every Saturday. I've had 127 Saturdays out of 156 Saturdays since I was elected. Where's George? He's here. He's there. He's everywhere. He's on. He's on Christian Town. He's on Newsnight. He's on Channel 4 News. He's giving speeches in Parliament. He's campaigning with Hugo Chavez on the streets of Venezuela. He's known throughout the world. Can anybody who's standing against me in this election say any of that? Can anybody say that? Wallahi, can you imagine that uh, show on question time? Can you imagine <laughs> on this night? And the reason is, as Brother Muhammad Salas put it, there's nobody whipping us. There's nobody muzzling us. There's nobody shutting us up. We speak what we believe. We say what we mean. And we mean what we say. And what we mean is what you mean. That Bradford deserves better than the political class that I've been here for all these years. When I got here, that hole in the ground was so deep that some of my friends in here were able to climb over the wall with their sleeping bags and their tents and live there for 40 days before the sheriff's officers threw them out to draw attention to the fact that our council allowed the centre of Bradford to be, become a hall without even asking Westfield to sign a contract that they would develop it. Three years ago it was a hall, now it's a Westfield. And 800 people are going to be working there from this summer. And tens of thousands of people are going to be shopping there. When I got there the onion was falling down. They wanted it to fall down, to save them knocking it down, so we could have another hole to match the hole that we already had. Now it's been saved, and soon, along with the Alhambra, will be another jewel in the ground. When they tried to shut the media museum, it was us that made the campaign which saved it. Don't believe me, believe the minister, the Tory minister, who congratulated me in Parliament on the skill with which we have assembled this great campaign, this great coalition, which saved the media 
to see others. But we don't only think about Brad Fox. We think about the Rohingya Muslim people in Burma being persecuted. That's why we had a demonstration in Centenary Square in support of them, the only one in England so far as I'm aware. We care about the people in Gaza being massacred last summer. That's why we held, held Bradford's biggest ever demonstration in the center of the city in support with them. We, can, we care about the honor of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's why we organized a demonstration in defense of the honor of the Prophet when everyone was attacking the Muslims after the Charlie Hebdo affair. When so-called Britain first invaded the mosques here in Bradford, invaded even the house of the Lord Mayor of Bradford, nobody stopped them. We were the people. I came, my friend, yes, called me in power and left the chamber, got into my car, drove immediately to Bradford and visited every one of those mosques. stand elsewhere, I'm sorry to say, because we have nothing against labor. We are the real labor. All of us, if you counted up the years that we spent in labor, it would come to centuries, centuries in this room. We're real labor. We want labor to be labor. That's why we're fighting for the things that labor used to believe in. I can't leave the education issue, even though my friends, of whom I'm proud, have dealt with it in some detail. If your football team is second bottom of the league, the management gets the sack. But our school managers never get the sack, and they never think of resigning. When I got here, we were the fifth worst, you heard me say it, in the by-election. Over and over again, we've got the fifth worst schools in England. Well, now we've got the second worst schools in England. And it's time to sack the people who are running those schools. Put <laughs> Mr. Khan in charge of the schools. He's proved what he can do with schools. That's our goal. And I'll tell you something. My friends were kind and gentle about it because they are from the minorities and not unless you count being an Irish Catholic immigrant as a minority which is what I was brought up to be. Why is every director, everyone, why is every deputy director, everyone white when I go to these schools? Why is the head teacher who comes out to try and push me away from the school gate? Why are they all white? Does this community not have anybody within it capable of being a deputy director, a head teacher, a director? It's not good enough until Bradford City Council begins to look like Bradford, then our job is not done. Our job is not Two last quick points, if I may, Mr. Chairman. We have now, right now, this day, the balance of power in Bradford City Council. And if we win more seats on Thursday, we'll have the firmest possible grip on that balance of power. And I'll tell you this, we'll use that balance of power to make sure that nothing that is bad will ever pass through that council. And only that which is good will pass through that council. And my last point, by the grace of God, some fools don't believe in God. Allah Akbar. According to the opinion poll today, which is the same as the opinion poll yesterday, 
and the one the day before, and the one before, four days in a row. If you elect me, I'm going to hold the balance of power at Westminster. And I'll tell you something, when Ed Miliband calls me next weekend, as I promise you he will, to ask me if I'll vote to put him into Downing Street, I'll say yes. I can't put anybody else in. I can't put Cameron in. I can't put Clegg in. As Salah said, they're done with. <laughs> but I'll only put Ed Miliband into number 10 if he delivers for the city of Bradford. And if he It'll be a long conversation because I've got six points. The first one, he has to implement the Bradford Challenge to transform Bradford schools as Tower Hamlet's schools were transformed. Second, he's got to relocate a government department from London to Bradford. They've done it in Swansea, they've done it in Belfast, they've done it in Edinburgh, they've done it in Glasgow. They better do it for Bradford. Thirdly, I demand the abolition of the £18,600 a year spouse price that this government has imposed on you, and only on you. A Slovakian in Gunnington can bring his wife, can bring ten wives, and they don't have to speak English, and they don't have to show what their husband earns. Why should you? Why should you have to? Why should the government choose who you can marry? Why should the government choose who you can bring as your wife or your husband? This is discrimination on grounds of race and on grounds of class. 18,600 might be doable in London, but it isn't doable here in Bradford. Especially if you've got to prove it on your bank statement, on your tax records and in your employers' accounts. So we won't have it. We demand its immediate abolition. We demand a government inquiry into the obscene levels of car insurance here in this constituency. When I moved from Hollings Road to Whitley Hill, my car insurance went down. When my colleague Rob Hogman moved from Hollings Road to Howarth, his insurance premium fell by £2,000. The same car, the same driver, just a different address. This is collective punishment. Why should the careful drivers who never claim be punished for reckless drivers who are always claiming? I want a government inquiry into that. And I want the high-speed rail link. They're building it to Birmingham. They better keep on building it all the way to Leeds and they better give us a cross rail from Manchester to Bradford and they better give us one through station right in the centre of Bradford. <laughs> and I have one more condition and it's the only condition that isn't about Bradford. When Ed Miliband asks me next weekend Will you put me into Downing Street? I'll say yes. If, if you give me a guarantee that the British government will immediately recognize the state of Palestine, that's the